two seconds stun, but it does between 75 and 200 magic damage at level one. And that is an amazing skill. Like, yep. 75 damage, it's bad. 200 magic damage with one skill point, that's really good. Mm -hmm. So, very good at guaranteeing kills, pretty good early damage. The hero is naturally one of the fastest in the game, I believe, if not the fastest. It's either 325 or 330 base movement speed or something like that. Is he really that fast? He's riding a horse, dude, of course. Yeah, of course. Oh, I didn't uh, think, I think of the lore. I think Luna might be the fastest at 330, and, and maybe, but Chaos Knight is up, up there. there as well. Oh, yeah, and Chaos got, got buffed quite a few ago. times. You're right. But Chaos Knight, very, very fast hero, and uh, he's actually one of the best hard carries in the very, very late game. Oh, yeah. Um, due Phantasm. to the fact that Illusions and Phantasm, Phantasm is ridiculous how much damage it does because yeah. they get full uh, full stat gain from, from your primary hero. So very likely we'll see him go drums, treads, maybe an armlet, oh. BKB. And C deck fell for the bait here, Purge. They banned out the Wisp with their final, thinking uh, yeah. that it could be a Naga core. And I think that's that's part of the, the plan here with the fourth pick Chaos seconds. Knight to mm -hmm. see if they can force them to burn a final ban on a hero they weren't really intending on picking anyhow. Yeah. I mean, that was cool. They tricked him, but you know, you yeah. don't win the game by forcing him to ban true. that. No, just a like little nuance. You know? you know, it's yeah, you're totally right. They, that, that is a sign that C deck is slightly misreading VP as a, as a team and as right. an organization. Um, that I really don't see them pick the Wisp very often, and based on all of their picks, as soon as I saw that Naga, I was like, support Naga. You know, it's <laughs> like they every time they play him, they play him support. And of course, the chance yeah. is always there, but uh, Wisp was not going to be the pick. See, so. that, that's part of that strategy. You play it support every single time, so teams know, okay, first pick Naga, that's Lil's hero, and then just takes that one time to be caught off guard when you hit that curveball and go, uh-oh, we were not prepared yeah. for that uh, that core Naga. And so. maybe they don't have the best Naga, anti-Naga heroes this game. Um, they do have a Lina though. Lina's pretty good at mm -hmm. cleaving illusions, and that's something else Chaos Knight has to be worried about. But the same goes the opposite way. They stun that Lina, she's gonna die really fast um, if yeah. Dazzle's not in the area. But they have a Tusk as well. They got Dazzle and Tusk to potentially protect her, and Tusk also a very good AoE. Maybe not very good, but good AoE, I would Decent. say. He can disable uh, Chaos Knight illusions, make it a bit hard for them to move. Not that that's a big deal, yeah. but... Okay. And a Storm pick. Okay, so I like the Storm pick here. There's not that many hard disables on VP. They have potential Orchid on G, and they got a stun at Illidan, but it's dodgeable. This is a really good Storm game, actually. Yeah, yeah that, that's a disjointable stun. He can also, if he gets an Orchid, he can kill the Naga Siren very easily. Ball across the map, finder, Orchid, try to kill her. Mm -hmm. um, and there isn't really any way to protect her on VP. They don't have a Shadow Demon, they don't have a Dazzle. So it's looking, I, that Storm actually really kind of wrecked VP in my eyes, at least. Um, they have plenty of tools to deal with the Brood. And it's almost like VP focused too much on the Brood. And now they don't have the tools for the Storm. Yeah, and they're playing the same kind of game as they did last game. They put their semi-carry mid. Obviously, Storm is very different than Viper, but again, they put their typical mid here in the safe lane, which is going to be the Lina. Now, the question comes down to, do you think VP is going to aggressive try lane? Because they could very easily put Darkseer versus Brood. It's a 1v1 matchup that is sometimes done and is seen as a good matchup for Darkseer. But I haven't seen it in years, actually. I, I feel like they're just going to lane standard, maybe. I, I think they'll lane standard as well. That, that would be my guess. Honestly, I hadn't really Prepare considered the aggro try lane as an option for VP, but now that you bring it up could be something they try here uh, vp also has really good mid game synergy because you've got a naga siren who's naturally tanky can iron shell him to make him turn into a decent damage dealer and also iron shell on chaos knight very very good there too so yeah uh, i actually really like the dark seer synergy they're not just picking a dark seer because they feel like having a dark seer it's because it actually is a decent off lane and it synergizes with their hero yeah, absolutely. So C deck looks like their lanes will be uh, perhaps a bit more straightforward. XC will grab the Brood Mother. Could they possibly aggro try with a safe lane Brood themselves? Yeah, they could also do that. It is an option. So a little looking around, scouting for opponents. And all of C deck is saying, we're going to hide in a really safe spot. I can't imagine any Radiant team walking up this direction. I'm surprised they're waiting so long. <laughs> Uh, yeah. They do have the Tusk. I would have thought the Tusk team was maybe the one they were worried about, but in reality, it's just, I don't know, a bit weird. Take a look at Vision. Uh, DK Phobos here can see the net. So they do know that the Brood, at the very least, was in the area. Yeah. So. Well, probably less likely uh, of an aggro try for C deck here. Uh, it's looking like it for VP, though, because all of their cores are top lane. They're not going bot lane. Yep. Good call on that one. Now, this is actually a very scary try lane. A lot of kill potential here. You've yep. got great disable uh, with all three of these heroes, a lot of damage as well. And with that Crystal Maiden Arcane Aura, 
they can actually have the mana sustainability to continue fighting. Even just yep. that, that natural synergy of the Riptide with the minus armor and CK doing physical damage is, is scary in its own right. And C deck is predicting that they were going aggressive tri lane, so they instead put their tri lane in the off lane and Brood is heading to the top lane. So they tricked him basically putting the net bot. They say, oh, Brood's obviously bot, so our, our lanes are the way they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Then Brood shifts to the top lane instead. But they, oh, they used both sentries already. They're completely getting played by C deck here. Both sentries were used to block camps or to check for wards. But what's going to happen now is Brood's going to be able to sap experience as much as he wants to. So mm -hmm. Lil will have to go rotate and maybe roam a little bit. At the very least, CM will be able to get level two very easily here. But not quite what they wanted uh, from VP's side here. Yeah, so we'll see if this transitions into musical lanes or if they just kind of deal with it. They don't, do they have any other sentries to spare? No, they do not. Yeah, they're already rotating down. Illidanal TP down bottom, Phobos comes top, and they absolutely want to match this Darkseer against the Brood. So FNG will linger around a little bit longer, actually needs the mana for his TP scroll uh, before he can head out. So. He'll go down bottom to join Illidan, and meanwhile in the mid lane, Lil looking for a potential courier snipe. He'll cut across the two towers here. He gets pinged out straight away by the Dazzle, and Shiki should be well aware that there could be a rotation coming his way. Yeah, he's but. halfway to the bot lane anyways, YTP yep. at that he's point, and he's making the Dazzle follow him. But I think this lane is going to now work out much better for, for VP. The only scary part is the snowball. They can use it to dodge or disrupt stun durations or chain stuns. But as yeah. soon as their three supports get here, things get really tough. The other issue is that they use their Sentry Ward to deward actually top. So this newly placed Observer Ward will block the small camp. but. Um, they won't be able to deward this, but they will be able to pressure the storm. Storm's not a very good tri laner yeah. as a carry. I just wanted to ask you about that. Of course, he's one of those classic mid heroes that needs a lot of XP, one that wants ball lightning uh -huh. as soon as possible, but this feels risky to me. If this tri lane fails for C deck, all of a sudden you've got this storm who doesn't have anywhere where he can retreat to. There's no stacks in the jungle that he can go for. There's a lot of pressure on C deck to make this tri lane work. Yeah, the, it's definitely going to be a bit iffy. It'll be easier now that the, the pull camp is, is now um, gone because they killed it. Yep. But it's still looking a little scary. They also have level 3 on Crystal Maiden, so you go for a Nova if he needs to, doing some good damage to the Dazzle. They're chasing, looking for the Reality Rift. They got a stun too. Snowball goes in on FNG, takes some damage. But it's mostly nice just illusions. Shards. Stun comes in on Dazzle now. He's going to have Grave, gets the Grave off. Illidan in some trouble now. He's taking creeps, getting right-clicked by Aggressive as well. There's the Remnant as well, slowing him down. But Lil gets the first blood on the Dazzle. Can they get anybody else? Oh, C deck just pulled into too many different directions. The CK just barely lives. He salves up and will look to reinitiate here. Also has uh, a little bit of mana. There we go. Two seconds stun on to Garter. But Aggressive's there with a Remnant, and it'll do enough damage to repel. A very awkward fight, but turns out one for nil. Virtus Pro getting the first blood, and it does go the way of the Naga Siren. I mean, the, the early Chaos Knight's just so strong. 325 movement speed, four armor's pretty good, plus a stout. And he hits for approximately 70 damage. That's a range of 55 to 85, by the way. So he has the potential for hitting almost as hard as a Trium Protector does in the early game. Wow. And his stun is just so big. 100 to 225 magic damage at this point. Lil rotating mid, and Snare comes out onto Shiki. Shiki doing what damage he can to Lil, trying to make it a one for one. It might be able to do it. Lil, that last auto attack will finish him off. Lena gets the kill before she dies, so she even finds the experience for it. Good news for G, but not the worst for Lena. I feel like the like Lil there should have just right clicked rather than trying to run, because I, I personally didn't think he was going to make it. Um, there's high armor on Naga Siren, so it's kind of close, but if he would have right clicked there, he would have had a better chance of killing Lena first and getting some levels out of that. So, mm -hmm. But either way, that was a great roam by him, especially if he bought out before he died. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he had, actually had boots already or not, but um, not Illidan sure. trying to grab the tusk to pull him up to the high ground so he could grab the rune instead, but won't be able to do though do so. And in terms of CS, looks like Illidan's actually pretty far behind now. 9 CS due to his rotation yep. and Storm's up to 21. So I think the lane setup here is better for VP as a whole, but uh, they really need to start getting tons of kills rather than just getting one for one or getting one kill. Mm -hmm. And we could see a rotation onto G, Garter with the invisibility rune. Stationed up, Snowball, Ice Shards at the ready. He's got to be within snowball range when the Lena's within snowball range. Here comes Stun, not going to hit too slow. A, yep. Well, he was he Lena was early. just out of range. The yeah. Lena was too slow, I meant. Yeah, just yeah. a little too far back. Couldn't get the LSA off. Yeah, the Tusk had to wait until the Lena was basically within attack range. It was the only way that was going to work. Level 1 snowball is a 0.5 second stun, so slightly misplayed by him. Lil Net coming in once more, but the TP reaction from the Dazzle will repel Lil. Okay, and now you pressure the Storm really hard. Sentry's looking to deward. They actually don't get him. The Two Observer Ward in the right spot. Oh my. This one's hard to deward though, because 
If you place uh, the extremes of either the right or left side, the typical top and bottom wards like mm -hmm. FNG placed here are not going to be there. So they use Queen Blade or the Tango to check in the hole, but it's not in there either. So they will not get it, and the small camp will never respawn, at least until the Sobs is up. Yeah, unfortunate for VP, but great news for the Storm Spirit. Uh, we, we mentioned how uh, risky this could be and well, how aggressive out four of second. Four second stun from oh, and Illidan. CM's here. This is bad news, Bears, for the Storm Spirit. No way he'll survive that one. And, well, Caster Curse coming to fruition there. Great kill for Virtus Pro and much needed on that Storm Spirit who is getting a, a lot of space. What a weird CM build. He went 0 2 2. I can't believe that. Brood Mother kills Naga Siren on the top of the map. That's going to be good for him. Uh, I'm very surprised to see CM have this build, though. Yeah. I, I guess it allows you to basically only use one spell repeatedly and get better value out of it, but I, I feel like with one skill point in Nova and one in Frostbite, you do more damage. You do 250 magic instead of 200, but the trade-off is that much, much less mana this way, so maybe that's his idea. You yeah. can just jungle. Well, the jungle is, is actually the same speed with two points versus one, but um, his, his mana versus a hero is going to be a little bit more efficient, so that's probably his thoughts. Yeah, that's a, it's a good point. It's hard to pass up that 4.5 second slow on the Crystal Nova, though. That's so yeah. powerful in these early levels. Even it's just a value point, even though it does scale decently in terms of that slow. But overall, things looking pretty good for Virtus Pro out of the initial lanes. They Ooh, are illusion is going to scout the CM. Oh, or the the Lina, the sorry. Yeah, Shiki. And he'll just rotate back. The Dark Seer is also getting a lot of farm out, out of this offlane, as you would expect against the Brood, but that is great for Virtus Pro. He's almost at a mech already, skipping boots entirely, and at this rate, he could have something like an eight minute mech mid lane, fight breaking out onto G. Laguna Blade will bring him down, and now Lil on the run will be able to live. I think Dragon Slave might be able to catch him. Ooh, yes, it gets does. Him. Just barely clips him. Very nice. And Two for nil in the mid. Double kill for Shiki. Phase boots for Alina at this point. Uh, very good against Quap, I guess. He'll be able to do a lot of damage with right clicks if he does do the chain stunning. Yep. And hopefully for him, running away from heroes like Chaos Knight or whatever. So, Look rope. at this brood build. This is interesting. Uh, Soul Ring and two Sage's Masks. Yeah, it's going to be an Orchid, 100%. Okay. Oh, God, you're right. I've just I've never seen it picked up this way. Okay, oh, you're right. right. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty standard to go this way because okay. really it's about the mana regen. It's not about, like, the damage. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It's just it was jarring when I first saw it. It's like, I see. have you ever seen someone buy just all the damage items for the Daedalus? It's uh, kind of weird, like Chrysalis, Broadsword, and Demon Edge. The first time I saw those three items in inventory, I was like, what on earth is he building? Without oh, doing right. the final recipe. Yeah, without doing the recipe for the Chrysalis. S sort of similar. Yeah. Anecdotal failure. If you're like, yeah, <laughs> broadsword, blades of attack. I saw that one time and I was like, is he making like phase boots and blade mail? I was yeah. so confused. You're just so used to people finishing the chrysalis yeah. first, it throws you yeah, off. Yeah, I've, so. I've seen that before. Yeah. That was pretty weird. Sort of a, a similar mental tick there, but still, Dark Seer is, is about it a mech. And if BP want to group up and fight early, they'll they'll have that option at their disposal. It's kind of interesting how the lane swapped as well. All of a sudden, VP put their Darkseer bottom as soon as the Brood went down there, and then VP again swaps their lanes because they want to have that lane advantage over the Storm. They want to threaten Stormdine. He's got level 6, though, but he doesn't have a Soul Ring yet, so his mana pool is actually quite low. That lowers his damage potential oh, as well. He as has a double damage here. as aggressive hops in onto Illidan. He will disjoint the net. Nicely played there. And rotation from the CM as well. Almost a big opportunity for VP. Huh. Tower pressure on the bottom. Uh, DK Phobos again, pushing the wave out. Uh, I think he has mech coming too. Yep, it's on the carrier. That's a good mech. That's uh, a very fast mech. Eight minute mech on Darkseer. Uh, I almost wonder if he should have gotten something like a Midas instead. Something you occasionally see on a Darkseer just to power up his levels, get his vacuum leveled up faster, and transition faster outside of that. Like, you can get a fast Hex or Shiva's Guard. You can get a lot of really important and team winning items on Darkseer sometimes. But instead he goes for the mech, high armor, Helps his team win fights in the early game, which is going to be definitely important this game due to the low carry potential of CDAC compared to the last. Yeah, definitely. Bobos just continuing to follow around this Broodmother. No matter where she rotates, he's ready to put out ion shells and make sure she can't pressure these lanes. And it's working quite well. All these towers very healthy for VP. And Illidan getting plenty of space to farm here. He started off kind of slow and actually still pretty lackluster on net worth. He's the lowest of the cores. I still have some faith in his ability to recover, though, here at Purge. Yeah, I, th I think he's doing absolutely fine. He's got enough levels. Uh, he's got a Phantasm pick up here. And, you know, he doesn't need as much farm to do well due to having an August Siren in the game. A little bit of armor reduction here is right. going to make his damage bump up uh, by about 12% or so every time he attacks somebody. So that's nice to have. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it, people are just leaving him alone at this point, too. So I think yeah. he's going to be happy. Tusk just uh, keeping the... Holding down the fort on the safe lane. Aggressive... We'll see what build he goes for. Picks up the Robe of the Magi, though, probably just the beginning of his power treads. 
Does this strike you as more of a, a Bloodstone or an Orchid kind of Dyer's game for this uh, Storm Spirit? Um, depends on, let's see what G is building. G looks like he's going for the Orchid build. He's got a Robo the Magi here, so yeah. uh, not surprising there at all. He can kill uh, Dazzle, he can kill Lina, he can kill Storm Spirit. So Storm Spirit, if things go terrible, he's like, worst case is you have to buy another. Oh, up by top, top, yep. Snowball resets things a little bit oh, here. Man. Big rotation onto Ilden, but he's got a lot of support nearby. Everyone else on VP TPing in as well. Dusk. Oh, Garner great, great. In trouble. Beautifully done by the Dazzle. Now out comes the Weave. Illidan on the run. One more auto attack on to do it, but he makes it into Fog. Oh. Now he's here. Huge Sonic Wave on two. He takes a Laguna in return, but he's still pretty healthy. Illidan tries to go back in. That'll backfire, but down comes the Wall Replica from the Dark Seer. They get the kill on the Dazzle as well as the Lena, and now they're going to tighten the noose around aggressive. He's low on mana, tries to zip forward, oh, but FNP man. gets mecked up. He lives, and it's VP with a big fight, one for three in the top lane. How did they win that fight? I can't believe it. That was like, oh wow, they just four-man TP'd. Chaos Knight is so dead. I, I was Sonic happy. Wave Purge, that's how they won yeah. that fight. That I was, was sick. I was happy that he came back out of the trees to throw a stun before he died, because he was solo. He made a bit of a mistake, though. He had an eight-stick here. Maybe that was from as he died that they casted that many spells, but... I thought that was well played by Illidan there, drew them all to the right. I couldn't believe that everybody in VP got there so fast, but everything just like fell into line. That Sonic Wave scream just lowered everybody on C deck, and they actually got to pick everybody off, and what a big advantage. Tower, it goes down. Broodmother was able to take one in the meantime, but mm -hmm. that's completely worth it there for VP. Storm dies, 0-2-1 for him, and now his item decisions get tough, because if this Quap, she's already got one Oblivion Staff and 200 gold. If she's able to finish the Orchid far before Storm Spirit does, then he's just going to start getting solo killed, and he's going to have a terrible game, and there's no way that C-Dex can be able to deal with that in due course. Yeah, Storm definitely losing some momentum here, and we could see another fight break out around the mid. Broodmother lingering nearby, a huge Spiderling army ready to jump on one of these supports. Oh, Medallion on the Brood. Yeah. Oh, Fringe. FNG gonna walk right into it. Oh my, that medallion doing some work. Now Lil clears up a lot he's of got, his little baby he might spiders. Die too. He's got a dust. Lil getting a little bit brave, but Illidan comes in with a reality rip. Spiders chasing down Lil. Lena comes in to cut off the path of retreat. Now XZ just trying to micro around the trees here. Oh, dust is still him. there, but it's about to expire. Can they actually finish him off? Illidan, he misses the wall, tries to vacuum it in. It's just enough damage, but just barely. Now Phobos moving forward. Will take a walrus punch and ends up falling as well. But G, he's here. Oh, no Sonic blink. Wave. That is not where you want to be, my friend. Okay. Now it's C-Deck that come out big. A one for four, I believe. Just their brood falling in that fight. Yeah, when you stack up about 30 spiders, they can somehow attack at the same time, and that's a two-shot on any support at that point in the game. Yeah, Man, especially with a medallion. If they knew that he was there and they initiated on him properly, it very easily could have been a brood kill, but you know, at that point, Crystal Maiden was just dead already. Just died too fast, and the rest of C-Deck was in the area and ready to help clean up, and they just covered each other perfectly, and VP super overcommitted, so... G blinking forward and getting picked off for almost nothing there. Yeah, Storm, he's got a soul ring now, so quite possibly a bloodstone on the horizon for him. Yeah, I think he has to, because if the Orchid comes out far earlier and he doesn't have his Orchid, then he either needs HP or Yules. And if you go Yules, your damage is horrible. So yeah. you really don't want to have to go that way if you get super shut down. He's got to go for some HP first, at the very least the soul rings that he has mana to potentially position better. Mm -hmm. All right, things coming together here for c -Deck. Looks like the Brood will be the one that goes for that Orchid. First Oblivion Staff picked up already and another 1,000 gold. So XZ having a pretty strong presence this game. 3-1-1. One, and he's one. Find CM. Even though he's, you know, maybe. FNG gets down to Sentry Ward. And he will back out. Okay. Sees the spiders now. But I feel like XZ has had a really big impact. Even though he's had to play some musical lanes, he's still forced VP to constantly move around. And he's been involved in fights. He's even taken a tower. It's just pretty good yeah. Brood play. I like uh, some other broods, they focus a lot more in lanes, but XZ here is focusing on the jungle, even though the tier 2 tower isn't even threatened yet. Yeah. And I like that play a lot better, because it limits so much of the map for VP, plus because they got that tier 1 in the mid lane. Like, they have so much space right now, and I, I really like that. Um, his play is making a huge impact here, despite uh, VP winning that earlier fight, they were able to squeak out that win in the jungle before. Yeah. Uh, Dark Steer still farming quite a bit as uh, Chaos Knight gets a little bit of space up in this top lane as well. Going for the Armlet first item, I think a very standard item on CK. Great to uh -huh. buff up those illusions. You toggle it on, of course, before you pop the Phantasm. But nothing out of the ordinary thus far from Virtus Pro in terms of item builds. We'll see what Dark Seer grabs next. He's picked up the Arcane Boots, probably Guardian Greaves at some point. Um, obviously a blink, but after that, sky's the limit. I guess Shiva's Guard could be pretty good here as well. So another Iron Shell going on Chaos Knight. He's going to have to land the stun. Will he be able to ball dodge it? He does get out of there pretty easily. 
very difficult to land the stun on the on the Storm Spirit as a Chaos Knight. It's very, very unlikely against a top tier player like this. So yep. their time has been a bit wasted. Ooh, they pop the smoke. Are they going to wrap around towards mid? Or they stay on top? Looks like they'll rotate in onto mid where XZ and Shiki are pressuring this tower. Queen of Pain nearby, and yeah, they're going to cut right through the mid lane here. Illidan needs to be a little careful. I don't know if the tower. He got pretty close to that tower. Might have saw. Smoke breaks. They're going to pop the dust. Here's the dust. And they do spot. Oh, they the didn't brood. get the brood. It doesn't hit him. Oh, no. Oh, they pull him back. They spot him with the vacuum. There's a sentry down, and that's going to get it. There we go. Okay. Ooh, that was close. Great use of the CM ulti there. No hesitation. They did have to burn an extra sentry, so a yeah. little bit unfortunate, but they get the kill. That's what's really important. It's like, I don't know where you are, but I'm going to cause a blizzard in this <laughs> forest. <laughs> well, we talked about that cooldown reduction with only 90 seconds. You just go for it. Now in the bottom it's lane, we'll see Tusk initiated on. Snowball to reset. He's got a Phantasm dodge this. Nicely done by Illidan. Spawns the illusions. The song, song the siren. comes. Ooh, I, oh, I, he, he has the armlet here completed. These are Yules, though. This is kind of tough. If Yules dodges the stun, he's safe. She he doesn't get it off. Uh, Four oh. seconds as well. Will's in trouble. That's a big heal bomb from Q. Laguna oh, just goes on. To the, <laughs> the Chaos Knight just completely chunks him. Naga and Chaos Knight stuck in the grave. Even with the reset from the Naga, CDAC find the better of it. Now they go on to the Queen of Pain. Yules to set it up right into the LSA, but some follow up is there. Walrus punch, snowball in. G. Will he live? The mech's almost enough. Okay, he's going to stay alive. Now CDAC have to retreat after the Sonic Wave comes out. Q will grave. He's forced to die. And Tusk also ends up going down to the Queen of Pain. Nice right. turnaround from VP. I mean, that looked like a like a train wreck. As soon as the sh uh, the Queen of Pain got used, the old stuff was like, oh, I thought Quap was dead for sure. Me too. But that that mech helped so much, and G knew it as well. He was like, I'm gonna be fine. He's gonna mech me. I'm gonna pop my wand, and I'm gonna stay alive. And that's exactly what happened. He took all those stuns, the mech hit, and he was like, time to fight, baby. And he threw <laughs> his ult out, got the dazzle really low, and he just started right clicking that Tusk. The wall actually helping quite a bit in those yep. little bit of. Uh, do or die situations, so yeah. they, they they trade out kills at, at, at the very least. Um, I, I was very surprised that Chaos Knight didn't kill Alina, but it was just good decision making by Alina. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, the important thing in that first fight was that he didn't Yules himself. Instead, he threw a stun. So during that duration, while he was stunned, he also stunned the CK illusions for two and a half seconds, and Chaos Knight was just basically scared at that point. So um, I think that was nice to do. Maybe Illidan should have just gone all in and tried to kill Alina, but. It didn't work out, and luckily the rest of his team was able to salvage things. Yeah. Oh, here we go. FNG and XZ having some fun in the jungle, and it will be XZ that comes out ahead. Uses that freezing field, but at this point the Broodmother is just... Cool off spiders. Big. Yeah, I guess that's something. There's just about an Orchid completed here for XZ. He's just a couple hundred gold short as his team moves into Roshan. They've got the Medallion on the Broodmother, and this will be a nice, e easy HS for C-Deck. Completely uncontested by VP. Things looking pretty good for this dire team here, Purge. They're yeah. not pulling ahead by a huge net worth experience lead, but they've got a lot of tools coming their way. Now they get Roche, and they've got a fair bit of map control. Yeah, Illidan's pretty far behind in terms of farm where he normally is, and that's due to them trying to do this aggressive tri lane. Normally he has huge GPM, he has huge last hits, and gets a bunch of kills, but it's been a bit of a tough game, and he's not really against heroes that Chaos Knight's good at. I feel like this isn't genuinely the best Chaos Knight game. Hard to play against a Tusk because he's going to snowball dodge your stun. Hard to play against a Dazzle because he's going to grave wherever you go on. It's just all of his decisions are so difficult this game. He can't kill Storm either. It's just not a very good Chaos Knight game, so I fear that Illidan won't be able to get a lot of a lot of value out of his hero. Yeah. Now we see VP with a smoke rotation on three towards the top lane. They got vision. They want aggressive. There's the Orchid debut right on top of him. Remember, he has the Age of the Immortal, so he'll be coming back to life. We'll see if C deck rotate to try and save him, or if they just continue split farming in other areas. It will be the former. Aggressive comes back to life. A lot of TP's in. Illidan gets blocked out by the Ice Shards. Phobos caught by the Vortex, but there's Song of the Siren from Lil. That'll break things up. They back. Fight. They want to continue fighting. Wall set up oh, as well. Oh, C deck in a lot of trouble. Oh, huge CMO. vacuum wall. CM all doing huge damage as well. Illidan with a reality rift. They've already killed two. Q with a uh, grave on himself. Will be in a lot of trouble. Gets finished off by another reality rift to the face. Shiki on the run here. Still has his Yule Scepter. And he'll be able to make it out. Three for nil from Virtus Pro. Another explosive fight for them as they get a tier two tower. Yeah, the, the reason that works so well, that I, when they first used the Orkin on the Storm, they used Quapult on him as well. And I thought that was very weird because I was like, well, now you can't necessarily kill him the second time. But with the the reset from the Naga ult, it allowed the Orchid to come off cooldown. It's a very low cooldown item. 18 seconds here. So it bought him enough time. That way the Orchid was able to kill Storm twice during a team fight and completely make his hero worthless. He hasn't spent any money yet. 2k in the bank. 
I don't know if he hasn't decided what he wants yet or not, but I feel like if he had maybe a point... No, he was actually dead no matter what there, yeah, but they're... but surely he needs to start buying something soon and make a decision. Mm -hmm. Right now, Storm, 0-3-3. Three, and three. We just rolled over the 20-minute mark, and that's not the kind of KDA score you want to see on your, your position one hero. You want him to be a lot more active, or if he doesn't have the KDA, have a lot more farm to his name. This Storm is starting to become a liability here. You were mentioning how uh, lackluster the farm was on Illidan. Well, now he is no longer the lowest uh, lowest net worth core. Aggressive is taking that seat. Yeah, that was a really good fight for Illidan, too. He, he didn't get lucky on his illusion spawns or anything, but... And as soon as that Orchid came on the storm and they started dealing with all those heroes, it, once the Chaos is amazing, I, I didn't mean to meme or joke here, I'm sorry, but Chaos Knight becomes really strong when there's high chaos. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Uh, it's true, though. It, it really is. That's, I mean, that's part of why Manta Style is a great item on him. It just turns the game into chaos with all those illusions. That's, that's, that's the ultimate orb. I mean, I, I don't know if he'll build it. it it's that or Scotty, probably. Um, yeah. I think Scotty is a better damage item. Manta's great, but you don't really have the mana to, to deal with it, because it's like 165. Your ultimate's 200. That's 365. You got to throw some stuns out during the fight. It, it becomes really hard to afford. Yeah. Late I, game, maybe, after Scotty, sure. I guess that's part of the reason you see a lot of CKs go for early drums, just to help yes, with that mana exactly. Pool. Totally. That's exactly why they build it. It's like you get your stats, you get an extra 9 int. It's a really good solution towards having a bit of low mana. But again, he's in a pretty good spot. Uh, they have Arcanes on the Naga Siren, and Crystal Maiden has already put 4 points into Arcane Ore, so he's getting an extra 2.5 mana per second. That helps. So it helps a lot. Yeah. So looking at attack. item progression here, Dire Side, a couple uh, point boosters coming out. Lena making progression towards her Agonims, not that far away. And Storm does grab the point booster now to try and get closer to that Bloodstone. But every minute that ticks is a minute that uh, he's wishing he had it already. Oh, Ooh. freezing field from FNG. They'll, they see the spiders hoping to find the big one, but Brood Mama tucked nicely in the tree line there. She'll be just fine. I mean, they're, they're actually just happy killing the spiders. It's <laughs> not a lot of gold and a lot of experience, but it actually helps out a lot. They probably got at least 100, 150 gold there from killing those spiders for their team. Yeah. And that's not terrible, it's especially awards, with this low cooldown. Yeah, exactly. CM's happy with that. Oh, Lena actually switching it up. She goes Soul Booster instead of the Agonyms. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the build that... Uh, I don't think it'll be Octarine Core... So just Bloodstone? Probably Bloodstone. That's what Sumail was doing yesterday. He yeah. Went, he went for the Bloodstone. That way he could basically just constantly have his Fiery Soul maxed out. Um, I'm not 100% it'll be that. I haven't seen much Octarine rush on uh, Lina in this way. Like, Yule's into Octarine. it's kind of okay here. It's okay if you can get it. The problem is now she has to pull up 2,700 gold and BP starting to yeah. five man. And that's where you haven't quite hit that peak of your power curve. If that's the build you're going <gasps> for. Ooh, use Laguna Blade on an illusion here. Uh-oh. Uncharacteristic mistake out of Shiki here. Yep. Uh, that was not no, expected. Rotation that. up top, aggressive. He gets Orchid in right away. There's the Sonic Wave. Jeez. If he makes it out, that Soul Burn's going to kill him in the yeah. well. Yep, absolutely. Does pick up a point booster, so we'll be a Bloodstone on Storm. Could have used that HP a bit earlier, but, you know, he's probably waiting to see. Maybe if I win the next team fight, I can have, like, 4-ish K gold, and I'll be able to build a Here we go. Now BP out. just go towards the high ground. Phantasm even gets the extra illusion out of it. Lucky Illidan. And he uses it to dance with enemy heroes. <laughs> a lot of damage on this tier 3 tower, though. Glyph's already been used. It's down at half HP. There's no Laguna for another 20 seconds. Storm does have a buyback, but absolutely doesn't want to use it. Now, Vacuum Wall, a nice setup here from Phobos. They'll try to reset things with the Snowball. It's a Shallow Grave Snowball of all things oh. here. Purge, it goes in aggressive on the Phobos, but Freezing Field, they're in trouble. Lena dies, Garner in a lot of trouble as well. Gets off a Walrus Punch before he falls, but fall he shall, with VP standing, all five still alive. So this is looking like VP is just rolling over C deck. They're trying so hard to stabilize, but VP's damage output oh, is just no. too high. They silence on top of Storm. Four seconds stun. Gets great vacuum into the wall, and they are just falling down. Storm gets back into the fountain, at least with a triple jump, but that looks to be a top rack at 24 minutes. And despite VP's slightly rough start on their Chaos Knight, the other cores have absolutely held it together, and their supports have been completely dealing with the Brood. Mm -hmm. And it Right there, you see that little buff and just the wall staying around a bit longer, coming in kind of a two-pronged assault there in both those fights. Right. They're backing, actually. They don't get the barracks, but sort of similar to last game, where VP know that was a great fight, they have a huge lead, and they don't need to force the issue. No need yeah. to take the risk and uh, you know, 
Give C-Deck a little bit of extra there. You look at that goal graph and, oh yeah, they've got some momentum going their way. <laughs> yes. Um, they probably could have gotten the range barracks, but they might, they would have forced a potential engagement and all of C-Deck would have been up with their ultimates. And it's just a lot safer at this point to play it. And uh, you Storm know, is, it. he's fallen down near the supports at this rate uh, with, with the net worth. I mean, Tusk is creeping on up there. He still doesn't have any items. I mean, Bloodstone is around the corner now. He can pick up the soul booster after a, another creep or two. But attack. even just the Bloodstone at this point feels a little bit lackluster. Sure, it'll help him survive more, but doesn't help that damage output. It it does well, it does really, of, yeah. but um, it's not nearly as good as having an Orchid for kill potential. The extra mana will help, but right. it's not like they just need mana to get kills. They, yeah, they that, need that's disables. what I mean. Obviously, it helps you do more yeah. damage, but not the same way as an Orchid or if he's really yeah. getting these big items to... He needs his team to basically set up kills, and they need to pick people off on button. He does go for the fast Manta Rush, so you're right on that one. Okay. Um, it is... Once you get Phantasm and Manta, though, it gets pretty crazy. You can do this with an Illusion Rune as well. You can just pull around people, so... Here we go. See that coming around the backside. They jump onto Lil as well as FNG. Both of them get blown up, and now Fomos with Vacuum Wall on four. Sets up for the Sonic Wave, and it connects on all of them. Now they kill XZ off to the side. See that starting to scatter about here as VP just hunting for more pickoffs. They find Q. He'll be forced to grave TP. No interrupt Whoa. there. He'll make it out on the other side of the fight. Illidan doing what he can, but it's a 1v3, and it looks like he won't find any kills himself. So at the end, one for two, brood for both supports of Virtus Pro. Great wrap around there. Uh, they put an observer on the high ground, and they got to initiate as they wanted to. They lose the range back, so there's the snowball. In. Puts it on Illidan. He goes in on Lena, but a great Yules once again. Working on him as well. Storm's coming back, looking for the stun. Lance, G is up. He's wanting to grab the gem, but it's on the ground, and he's stunned. Oh, nice man, Luguda. they just got him. Yeah, and Shiki will actually live. Now Illidan taking some decent damage. Phobos still very tanky, wants to chase down Shiki, and he'll be able to do it. Gives him that old punch. Bloodstone's up, though. Phobos, what's the play here? He's on his way in. He's going to blink into the trees. He'll try to TP out. Does he actually live here? He does. He makes it out. Yeah, the storm ran out of mana there. Wasn't able to cast the pull, so... Range Barracks, uh, C-Deck takes a pretty good fight, and if we look at the fight recap, they do get an advantage out of that. 1342 versus 500. Not amazing, and I don't even think that includes the, the gold gain from a range barrack. It so not, um, it's pretty, pretty happy days for a VP here in the bottom fight. That was just perfectly fought by C-Deck, though. They blew up the person that just bought a gem. That was the Naga Siren. That really put a kink in what he wanted to do, and then he also can't cast Song of the Sirens. You can maybe criticize his positioning a little bit, but more than that, they what they should have done is been able to deward that ward. Actually, you know what they probably did? They smoked around, they put the ward down, and then they fought. And FNG, he'll get caught in the jungle here, but Lil resets with the song. Very nice. Aggressive, very low on mana. They could possibly turn on him. Yeah. And they will. Back you wall. They'll mech him up. Freezing field. FNG hungry for some vengeance. XZ will die first, and now aggressive with nowhere to go. Will commit suicide. Compliments of that new blunt. Time. All right. Good turn there. And more gold going to VP. Yep. Good positioning from Lil that go around, though. Just definitely tucked into the trees there. I thought that FNG was a free pin. Great time to get a set of pickoffs as El Roche has respawned, and VP looking like they'll be able to claim the second Aegis. Very likely at this point. Um, they're TPing to go show up. There's actually a tier one tower up, so C deck can TP defend, but uh, the brood's still dead. He would have been a really good hero oh, to have. Does aggressive go for this? Pretty risky. Just their presence. The weave alone is enough for VP to think twice, and they won't commit. Now they find Q down bottom. Orchid's used, so no shallow grave to buy him some time. Oh, gets stunned. Might not but aggressive gets stunned as he hops in. He falls. Now G pops the BKB. Sonic wave. Not enough to finish off Dazzle. He will grave himself, but I think he is dead meat. He's got TOT as well. Quap secures that one. Gets the gem back, and well, caught inside of Yules, but G. Okay, he blinks back. I swear that was a blink forward. That's a blink. Two. I was whoa, he's going in. That's crazy. Oh, never mind. I so, felt it. I was like, he's gonna get that soul kill. Eels is gone. He's gonna dodge the stun. He's gonna do some amazing D things, and they're gonna finish off Roshan now. Now that Storm is dead for six seconds, C may actually collapse, but I think that gets could not too have late. gone much better for BP. Now they get Roche, they get a tier one tower, and they took a successful skirmish there, taking the storm now down to a humble three bloodstone charges. Will they find the broodmother? They do have the gem. They do uh, can they see him? Can they see him? Let's take a look here. This is Radiant Vision. Looks like they don't have the intel. It, they pinged in the area, but I think he is. Yeah, he has walked so. a very good path. He basically <laughs> ran over every cliff <laughs> to the other side of the map, and he's going to be fine. There's the Manta Snell. That's one really good thing about Manta, actually, on Chaos Knight, is his ultimate cooldown is so long, 140 seconds. So he can just Manta and still get a lot of value out of his items and his skills, 
without having to commit to an ultimate. So that's one of the really cool thing about his build. Yeah, we, you know, we talked about how much this Darkseer was farming, and he goes for that Scythe device, gets it completed before the 30 minute yeah. mark. This is a really farmed Darkseer. And now, with, oh, they have a Glyph. Okay, C deck can definitely make a hold here, but it's a 5v3. They've got a few heroes scattered about. Brood looking for some Radiant's split pushing, perhaps, and aggressive. Right. Does have a TP, but he's out of the base. And they are approaching the high ground. FNG, good positioning. He's got lots of AP and a cloak. Not too many support items really sitting around. Just things like urns and wands. No glimmer capes, no force staffs. It's like VP really just focuses on getting damage, and with the exception of mech and maybe an urn, that's that's about it. They don't vote like a lot of other teams. They feel like are like, oh, really fast glimmer cape. That's what we need to keep our heroes and our cores and our supports alive. But they rely on skills to do that instead. They they pick Naga and they grab sleep instead. It's a it's a yeah. pretty different way to play, and it's cool to see that style come out. It's actually a stat I'd like to ask Knoxville about. I wonder how and often VP does buy a, a Glimmer Cape. It's It's got to be really well. I'm going to take a look at this handy stats document that is right next to me. All right. Please excuse me for four minutes while I address this. <laughs> All right, very good. Tier 2 tower in the mid lane. The last outer tower for C-Deck will be under siege here from VP, and they will not move the defense. They'll let this be fall and make the wise choice not to burn the Glyph. But we'll also find the last hit there, and VP just push up the mid to break the backdoor protection and this range ba or melee barracks up top maybe yes, be very careful yeah absolutely and they are split pushing around though it, again it's a 5v3 here in the base man i love the iron shell and all the illusions so cool they go in on the lena he does yules dodge the stun okay but he's still surrounded to great wall placement here sonic wave only hits on one the snowball resets things aggressive now joining the party but the freezing field doing big damage from fng he gets uh, interrupted with the orchid but now song of the siren they want to set up on the c deck here they'll go in on to xc great grave from the dazzle that buys them just a little bit more time Four still alive, but now Broodmother's dead. It's a 5v3, and c are in trouble. Aggressive, it's locked down. Snowball in. Garter, he wants something, and he's not going to get it. Instead, they hit him with a force. It's oh, stunned down. He goes aggressive with big damage, but he just can't survive. He's zipping all over the place. Vacuum's pulling him back. He gets grave, but now Q has to die, and things looking grim for c here, Purge. Finally, the rack's coming. Buyback happens, and Dazzle and, as well as Brood, actually teeping out. They're going to try to stop them, maybe get some kills. Stun on G. He's going to go down. No, they for Illidan instead pick up the kill and they get the double. There's the Aegis though. Can they get him again? G back to oh, life, yeah. stunned right away. Perfectly timed from Shiki. Very nice. They get the two in the end. You know, that looked really good for Virtus Pro, but at the end of the day, they only get the melee barracks. Yeah. They force a lot of buybacks. That's the one thing. Three buybacks used to make that happen for okay. CJ. A very expensive hold. So, melee barracks down. That helps a lot when you're playing against a split push team. If you have the split push advantage over the enemy team, you're in a good spot. So now they basically don't have to worry about Brood as a whole at the top lane. It just comes down to two lanes, so it becomes easier to defend as a whole. And man, Storm, Storm is doing his best here, but he was just so far behind from the early game that his mana pool is just super limited. He can ball in once, but then he's pretty much out of mana and then has to play the I'm going to ball all the way home in short little bursts before I die game. And that's just not where he wants to be. VP is just like... They've got everything they need. They've got the silences. They've got tons of illusions coming out of Chaos Lane. Like you said, even though they lost that, they're still in a really good place. Yeah, and we're getting to that point where the Chaos Knight is very hard to control. He's got his Reaver. He'll be looking towards these big strength items. So not only he'll be hard to kill, but also his Phantasm illusions. Yeah, they want an objective out of this, though. They're all grouped up in the mid lane. Uh, they will retreat once they get past the river. And I think the smart play here. The double Bloodstone. One on Lena, one on Storm. Oh, they smoke up. C deck. I, I wouldn't quite call it the YOLO smoke, but this is. Um, they don't have too many opportunities left to make these big recovery plays, yeah, Verge. They need to take the risk here. And they will be able to initiate. They've got a blink dagger on Tusk. Or is it DK Phobos that they go and they see him? All right, there they go. Oh, he oh, blinks. Oh, what a blink from Phobos. How did. That must have just been good timing or. But, oh, God, that was so fast. Did they put the net down or something? Maybe it was a net. I have no idea, but that was that was that, insane. That could have been one of those plays where the stars aligned. Like this feels a little bit scary, and he was about to blink back anyhow yeah. as they hop in. That felt almost too fast for reactions. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I don't but, know if maybe somebody else broke the smoke and they saw them on the high ground or not. But either way, well played by Phobos. He lives in that five-man smoke. It's completely repelled. And that's basically what Cedek needed there. It's obviously not all over, but if they could have gotten like a three-man kill, four-man kill, something like that, win a team fight due to their nice start, then that would have been really good for them. And I think they could have done it as well.
Darkseer has most of the heal and the disable and the good team fight presence, and they could have done a Walrus Punch into a Snowball into a Lina Stun with the Laguna. So There's so many available. luxury items on VP now. There's an Aghanim Scepter on the Crystal Maiden. Uh, diffusal Blade on Naga's side. Yeah, Naga just had 3,500 oh gold. Right clicks a Diffusal. This is getting out of control. It's a very interesting support purchase. Um, it, it, it's very similar to Lotus Orb, really, because you can debuff any negative uh, hexes, things like that on your team, of which there basically are none. But, um, I mean, you could remove a, uh, a Yules from an ally. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, that is. Break the timing on that. But it's more importantly, it's it's so going to be used to kill Lina. Um, if, you, if you get four illusions up and you become something that Lina has to deal with, that's going to be really nice because then she'll use her stuns on you instead of the Chaos Knight illusions. Yeah, this is a, a game of difficult smokes here. VP smoke is five, but gets broken by the Brood. And that will not cause a retreat, though. They're going to go... They're going to stay true to the course. Five up the mid lane. Glyph still cooling down for the Dire, actually, just about 35 seconds. The heart is ready to go on Chaos Knight. Yeah. Almost 3k HP without armlet turned on. He'll get an extra 25 strength with that on. And there we go. Up top, aggressive. Oh, the illusion. Soul burn. Yeah, oh, my. That's oh, a big on deal. Lina. All right, that's a dead hero. Okay, well. Lina didn't do it this time. That makes this push a lot easier. There's no buyback on the Storm, so it's a 4v5 at best here. Mid lane definitely getting cleaned up. And Garter just hanging out near that bottom tier 3. That's, That's it. See that call like... GG. And yeah, there's nothing they can do here. Without without the Storm, it's a 4v5. And this Shiki is... just gets rolled over. This is the, the biggest peak of power for Chaos Knight is right now. And hit it far before their opponents got farmed. And you can just see the damage. It's a really nice Lina counter, actually. Obviously, Dragon Slave and Light Strike Ray can be an issue, but if you go first and you jump him and you stun him before he's able to use himself, that is a kill every single time. Even if he gets his BKB.